All right, thanks, uh, Nick. And uh, it's it, this is kind of one of those moments where I realize after like 12 years of doing biomechanics research, people care a lot more about golf biomechanics than they do about how 75-year-olds walk up and down stairs. Um, never been able to speak to, I think, people who care so much about what I do in my lab. Uh, and so it is a great honor to be here. Uh, I feel like with it being the biomechanics uh, open forum, not having at least kind of one quote uh, from Isaac Newton would seem to be a little bit of a disservice to the night. Um, and so I, I, the quote I grabbed from him was the idea that if, if I see any further than anyone else, it's mainly the idea is because I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. And so as Nick brought up, I, I would say I'm very new to the scene of golf biomechanics, just a few years of doing research. And when I think of the people who have done wonderful work, you know, presenting after, uh, uh, you know, Phil Sheetham. And even I, I think very distinctly about 10 years ago, I had an interview at Cal State Fullerton um, and Dr. Scott Lynn was uh, kind of coming down from, from some event at breakfast. And I forget what golf company he was meeting with, but I remember sitting there at breakfast thinking, he is the coolest person in the entire world, right? He's doing all the stuff that I want to be doing eventually. I did not uh, accept that job offer. I will say Scott did try and offer it to me. And, and we joke that had I went there 10 years ago, we probably would have been ruling the world at this point. I'm at Utah Valley University, as Nick brought up. Um, and this is a picture of my lab uh, that I currently just moved into probably about three or four days ago. Um, and so this is some of the first data collections we've done. If you've seen into a biomechanics lab, you're not afraid of cords and cameras. It's pretty common. Um, and I kind of have a really cool setup there where the lower rail system, these are my uh, markerless cameras that run a software called Thea. Uh, which is a biomechanics software that allows me to build models using video images. And then my upper cameras at the top, these are my just Qualysis cameras that are marker based. And so I have uh, enough of those where I can put markers on the clubs, I can put them on the body, I can use markerless for the body. Uh, they stand on my force plates and hit in front of a track man and I can look at anything under the sun. Uh, and that's what I've kind of began to do as part of my research uh, at Utah Valley University. Now, I, I, again, I once had a conversation with uh, Scott where he actually said to me, you know, Tyler, I, all of the, the cool, cool equipment I have, and I literally only ever turn it on when I'm doing hardcore research. He said, if I'm looking at golfers and I want to create uh, quick changes to what they're doing, he said, I'll take force plates over that any day. Um, and over the past year, I think I've really learned the power of, of that comment that he made, where I find myself, again, doing this for some of the hardcore research I might do um, and have some fun stuff that we have going on this year in our lab. But the more and more when I look at golfers and I want to start to help them understand how to utilize the ground a little bit better in their swing, uh, again, I find that force plates become so intuitive. Uh, they're very visual for the golfer and the coach. And I think the opportunity to make changes uh, that that brings is, is really powerful. And so what Nick wanted me to do tonight was to really just take a few minutes uh, so you, maybe you could get to know me a little bit uh, and just share with you a little bit about some of the things that I've been doing, uh, kind of utilizing force plate technology uh, to help golfers improve in the way they swing a golf club. So uh, the first thing I always like to say with this um, and this is kind of one of my favorite um, things that I see a lot of, which is, and as he said, this is the smart to move uh, force plate system. So uh, that all of my demonstrations tonight will be based on this system. And what we like to say is force is one of those things that's invisible, right? We have lots of, of great opportunities to utilize cameras and, and even just hearing some of the new advancements in, in technology to utilize things to look at motion. But force is one of those things that's really invisible. Okay, so this was actually a demonstration I did with my class on Monday. And I grabbed a student and said, hey, come up. We were talking about ground reaction force that day in class. And I said, hop on these force plates and stand there. And he hopped on there. And I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, hey, like, is something wrong with the force plates? I pulled him off the force plates, put him back on there, and just had him stand there. And this is what I saw in his force data. And so if you're looking at this, hopefully you're looking at this saying, well, man, that red line is a whole lot bigger than the blue line. And this is a person who's just in quiet standing. You would look at him face on. You'd have no clue that he was putting two times as much force on his right leg than his left leg just standing there. 
Um, and it was pretty fascinating. We had him go through a variety of movements, sitting down in a chair, standing up out of a chair, air squats. Uh, my class got really excited about this. You know, most of them are, are physical therapy majors, and so they see the capacity to look at some of these things. And we asked this, this kid in class, and by the way, he gave permission for me to use his data, because I'm like, I'm going to show this to everyone I talk to. This is wild. Um, and he did just get an A in the class, even though we're only two weeks in. The capacity to be able to measure this stuff is, just, is so powerful. Uh, because while we think we can see these minute differences in force, to, in, in force changes, and the way a player is pushing on the ground, you know, some of it is very subtle, and being able to measure it becomes really powerful. So I, I liked this example. Uh, one of the players that I uh, worked with, and this was with, in conjunction with his golf coach, um, and I'm going to kind of take you through some of the things that we did to help him. And this was a player, and it was great. We talked about just this idea of some of these maybe swaying motions or lack of lateral force in the backswing. That's something I've been looking at a lot, is just the importance of this lateral force. It is the first force in the kinetic sequence. And typically what that's coming from is that trail leg pushing down and away from the target really, really hard. And we want golfers to not just load into that trail leg vertically, with a weight shift, we want them to actually push away from the target because that's going to create a really powerful ground reaction force that will create some motion for them. So this was a player that was really just kind of struggling creating some of these lateral forces. So the force that we were really looking at was this red one here in the backswing. And what we were trying to do was get him to feel like when he gets to, you know, arm parallel in the backswing, we get a big tilted forward red force vector. And, and he just wasn't really doing that. And the coach is like, I'm just trying to help him see this. I'm trying to help him understand this. And so all I did is I kind of, I pulled this out and I said, hey, see how this red thing is going straight up and down? We want this red thing to go a little bit this way. And here's a little bit of a drill progression that we can do to help you start to feel some of those motions. Okay, one of the great powerful things about that is he does drill progressions for maybe 10, 12 minutes. And then I can throw him right back on the force plates and can look at, did what we just did in that, you know, do in those 30 minutes, did it change the way that he's actually creating some of this red force vector? So all we are looking at there is, did that vector start to tilt more sideways, right? And the visual of this allowed us to say, hey, we've got that a little bit more flat. We can jump into the numbers, and the numbers is something that I get really, really excited about, okay? And one of those things that I've been looking at a lot lately is a variable called impulse. So impulse is this concept of not just how much force you're applying, but how long do you apply the force, okay? This is a, a time component of that force graph. And so it's not just about, hey, our peak force is X percentage, it's how much peak force can we, can we produce and how long and how early can we turn that force on? And so you can see right here in the corner, the impulse he had from that trail leg was about 2.2. And the units of this is kind of normalized to his size over an amount of time. And our goal was to take that from 2.2 and say, can we get him to turn that lateral force on a little bit earlier uh, and create a little bit better motion in the swing? And so 2.2 is between club starting and arm parallel. And I just kind of use those as reference points because they're easy to reference. And if I go into now his post data and look at that same impulse number, now I go from 2.2 to 7, right? So we're able to increase that by, you know, almost three-ish times, uh, three and change, to be able to get a, a much, much better impulse. And what that allows him to do as a player is he was actually utilizing his lead leg a little bit to try and almost push him forward. And so one of my favorite variables that actually increased on this was his lead leg lateral force. It's a force that I've, I've heard at least described a little bit as, as a little bit of a breaking force if we do have one in a swing. This is what our lead leg does. Uh, and this player actually, without even doing much on his lead leg, we're able to get that force to jump up. And, and that's actually the force in a lot of my research that correlates really strongly with club head speed. Uh, so this is just an example of, again, using the visuals in the app, showing him the force vectors, working through drills, and then the power of right back on the plates, and now his coach was really confident that the drill progression we prescribed was going to help him improve this force. That was a powerful, powerful moment there. So I have just a few more minutes. One of my favorite ones that, that I've done as of late is some of the testing that I've been able to do with our men's and women's golf team. 
Uh, and it took them probably about two years to find me. Um, and now it seems like I'm on speed dial of both of them. When can we get our players on your force plates? What do you, what do you think they're doing? Um, and I've had a great opportunity to spend a lot of time at TPI over the past probably three years. And so one of the things that I've learned there is, man, you got to test as much as you can test. And so one of the first things I did with, with our golf team was test some of their power numbers, right? They were coming to me because they wanted more speed, and we wanted to uncover that a little bit. So this was a player who was really struggling on club head speed. I actually have the numbers here. So she was sitting at about 88.5 miles per hour of club head speed. So we look at her data and we start to see, okay, what are some of the things that I noticed in her force data? Um, and the thing that jumped out a lot to me is that when I look at these, they're just not overly big, okay? The, the blue is, is representative of her lead leg. How hard is she pushing into the ground? And I know I need to get her to push a little bit harder into the ground. Well, when I look at the numbers on the graph, she was sitting at about, her combined forces here were about 127% of her body weight. We want them to be around 165% of their body weight. So just not enough force. Now, I had the benefit of I tested her vertical jump prior to this force plate session, and her vertical jump was almost 21 inches. So this is a golfer who is above LPGA Tour level, uh, almost in the middle of PGA Tour average. Um, and again, I've heard Greg say this a lot, this idea of coaching this athleticism out of, out of their golfers, right? And this is exactly what happened here. This is a girl who had all the leg power in the entire world. And what she was doing is she was pushing on the ground to the tune of about 125%. I mean, that's basically, I think I've seen the debate on the Facebook about, I don't know, Maseratis and Fiestas and whatever cars. It, it's like she had a Maserati engine, but she's like, I'm just gonna leave that in the garage. There's no need to bring that out to the golf course. Why would I ever do that? And so. This was kind of a cool opportunity to work with her. And, and all I even did, I was just curious what would happen if, if all I said to her was, put away your stock driver and just swing this thing as hard as you can. I wanna see what happens to your forces. Are, are you actually maybe able already to do some things with that vertical force? Because you do have that body power and strength to do that. So this was her swing she took, I don't know, a minute later and I just gave her the feedback of, I don't care really where this ball goes. Just swing this club as fast as you possibly can. So this is about three minutes later. And if I go to the TrackMan data, you know, automatically she's leaving four and a half miles per hour in the tank, which again was a little bit of a concern to me, um, and almost eight miles per hour of ball speed. What I really wanted to do was to go into these numbers and say, well, what actually happened to her vertical force production when she went into these numbers. And now her vertical force goes from 120% to 150%. So here's a player that really just needs to be able to understand that, hey, I've got this excellent power source and I've got to be able to tap into it. And again, this is where the power of being able to measure as much as we can uh, becomes so important to this golfer, right? For I don't know how long in her life, her athleticism, her speed has been coached out of her golf swing from probably well-meaning coaches for sure, but who just didn't understand that they were dealing with someone who had this incredible amount of leg power and that they could then teach her and train her how to use it. And so uh, it's been fun to continue to work with her in my lab and kind of go through some different things to really help her kind of grab onto this power and, and, and hopefully get her faster. Uh, and, and we know that'll help her play better golf. Okay? So, uh, very last, just in the two minutes, because I want to respect the time that Nick gave me. Um, you know, Smart to Move is really excited about some of the new things that they have coming out this year. Um, and so if I might put on just a little cap to just highlight some of that stuff, um, is the ability to at least um, initially um, get just some measurements of some representation of a little bit of some body motion, right? This is just measured body motion. And so what you're going to see right here is kind of the first iteration of this where these are just the raw measurements that are taken, right? There, there isn't anything going behind the scenes to try and calculate things. Um, you'll see kind of markers, or, or I should say uh, body positions kind of change a little bit throughout the swing. But with good lighting, with good camera setup, you know, we can start to see how the body's moving a little bit relative to the video. And even with raw data, get some power as to how are these forces related to the center of mass of the individual. How is the body moving relative to the forces? 
Um, and again, this is something we're really excited about. Um, and for sure, you know, swing by uh, the booth if, if you want to chat with them more about any of those things. Um, again, I know Nick just wanted me to take a few minutes. Again, I just want to say, you know, thank you. It, it is a pleasure uh, to be with you tonight. Uh, over the past couple of years, I've probably been able to interact with a lot of you at kind of local PGA sections. Um, and it really is a treat for me. Um, I feel like I learn more at those sessions every time I go. My handicap has dropped. That's probably thanks to one of our next presenters, which is Jake Thurm, that I met at one event. And he became my first ever golf instructor. So 39 years into my life, I hired a golf instructor, sent him some online videos, uh, and handicap dropped. So uh, it is a pleasure, the work that you're doing. Please feel free to, to, to reach out in any way. Um, I love to interact with coaches. I love to interact with other scientists. Um, you guys are passionate about this stuff, uh, and I just feel uh, really privileged to be a part of it and hope to add to those great foundational things that have already been done by the people like Greg Rose and Sasho and Scott uh, and Dr. Kwan. Um, I just hope that I can continue to add to that and help us uncover better ways that we can help golfers.